Today we are going to be reviewing the Netophone configuration document so our team is able to program your phones accordingly. I have gone ahead and already filled out this document so I can walk you through step by step on how this document should be completed. First off, we have the account name so I have entered Jill's Art School. And then we have the main contact as Jill Smith, then her email, contact number, and shipping address. Now please indicate the shipping address where you would like the phones to be shipped. If there is a suite or unit number, please be sure to include this also. If you are planning to use your existing phones with our system, then you would simply type in no ship in this section. Next, we can go down to the technical contact information. If you have a team member or professional that you are working with for the install of these phones, please provide their information in this section so our team is able to reach out to them for installation needs. You will notice that in this section we have a requested install date, so please indicate your desired date so our team has a better understanding of your timeline. Below we have the billing information, which is only needed if the billing information is different from the main contact. If the main contact and billing information are the same, please type in same as above. This page is now completed, so we're going to move on to the extensions section. So within this extension section, I have listed all of our team members here. Next, you will notice the space for extensions. You can choose to either use existing extensions if you have any, or you can choose to get new ones. If you are going to be getting new ones, we recommend starting with the number two, as this will work best with our system. Any extension used must be three or four digits long. So I have gone ahead and filled out all new extensions for these employees. Now since Jill Smith is going to be keeping her existing number, we are going to have to port that over to our system. So we have gone ahead and entered the number into our outbound caller ID. This means when Jill makes an outbound call, the caller will see this number pop up on their caller ID. For all the other users, we are getting new numbers, so we have typed in new number. And Netophone will be providing these users with new phone numbers. Then we have entered in the phone models that they are going to be receiving, and then each user has also provided an email address. By providing your email address, you will be able to use the voicemail to email option should you wish. Please make sure that all users have different email addresses. The MAC address is only necessary if you are bringing your own device. This will be a numerical and alphabetical code located at the bottom of your phone. For more information on this, you can contact your onboarding specialist. For the admin section, we are going to mark Jill Smith as the admin and all the rest are going to be no's for admin. Admin means that you are able to make changes on the account. You can also input any notes that you would like. So I've gone ahead and wrote Jill in as the owner and then Jim Holder as the head of marketing. It's not necessary to make these indications, but it can be helpful. Let's move on to the numbering section. If you remember from the previous screen, Jill Smith was the only one that was going to be keeping her existing number. So we're going to type in this number under the ported number section. Simply put, porting means the transfer of numbers from one provider to another. We've entered in the desired number here, and then we've gone ahead and assigned it to her extension at 2001. She would like her outbound caller ID to read the name of the company, but you can also choose to have your name appear instead if you choose. Please note that the system does not recognize special characters, so the apostrophe in Jill's art school will not appear on the outbound caller ID. Then next, this is very important, as this is the 911 in case of emergency address. This address needs to be exact, so in case of a 911 emergency, the police are able to locate the location. Now I want to point out that you also have to indicate if the numbers you are porting or receiving are going to be a voice number or a fax number. Please indicate accordingly in this section. Since we only have one ported number, I have indicated the rest as new. Then for the new numbers, we're going to type in the desired area code. Please enter two possible area code options as some larger cities no longer have certain area codes available. We then are going to be assigning these numbers. In this case, we're going to have a number pointing directly to the auto attendant so callers can get properly routed. We will review the auto attendants in greater detail shortly. So now this is all complete, let's move on to the ring groups tab. Within your ring groups tab, I have created two separate ring groups. First off, we have the sales ring group and we have put all of the members of the sales team within this section. We have also indicated their extension. So we have Jill, Bobby, and Jackie on the sales team, and then we have provided instructions for how they would like this ring group to function. 
In this instance, the phone will first ring extension 2001, and if no answer, it's going to go ahead and ring extension 2002 and 2003 simultaneously. If still there is no answer after this, it's going to go to voicemail at extension 2001. Then moving on to the marketing ring group, we have Jim and Toby from the marketing team. And for this functionality, we're going to have the phones ring all extensions at once. And if no answer, it's going to go to extension 2004. So the callers are able to leave a voicemail. Now that our ring groups are in place, we can move on to the auto attendance section and implement these ring groups accordingly. First off, we're going to go to the hours of operation section. Please be sure to update your time zone as by default we have this set to Eastern Time. If you are in a different time zone, please be sure to update accordingly. Next, go ahead and fill in your office hours and once you have completed that, we can move on to the auto attendance scripts. So the open script is the recording that's going to play during your open office hours and the closed script will play during your closed hours. You can choose to have only one auto attendant for both your open and closed, but it's nice to be able to provide different information depending on the time of day. So let's start off with the open script. We have typed up the following message. Thank you for calling Jill's Art School. For the sales team, please press 1. For the marketing team, please press 2. To speak directly to Jill Smith, please press 3 or stay on the line to be connected. Then we're going to go ahead and scroll down to the menu option so we can let the system know how you would like this auto attendant to function. So we first said press 1 to speak with the sales team so we have entered in the sales team ring group. If you remember we created these ring groups in the previous slide. And then we have the marketing ring group and then we have Jill's extension at 2001. And then we wanted to make sure that someone is connected even if they do not press in any of the options. So we have gone ahead and filled out Jill at extension 2001 under the Time Out menu option tab. Next, let's move on to the closed script. This reads, thank you for calling Jill's Art School. I am sorry, but our offices are currently closed. To leave a message for Jill Smith, please press 1. To leave a message for Jim Holder, please press 2. To leave a message for our sales team, please press 3. Or to leave a message for our marketing team, please press 4. Thank you and we will return your call during the next business day. Again, we have filled out the menu options accordingly. I've given timeout instructions, so if the caller does not select a prompt, they will be routed to voicemail at extension 2001. I have also added the option for them to replay the message by selecting 0. You can also add any notes you wish to include with additional auto attendant instructions. Last but not least, let's head over to the Buttons tab. Within this Buttons tab, we are going to be providing the information for the programming of your phone keys. We always start with the user's phone for key number one. So for example, if this is Jill Smith's phone, the name Jill Smith will appear for key number one. And the rest of the additional users will follow. You can choose how you'd like their names to appear within these keys. We also recommend adding two park buttons so you are able to place callers on hold with a click of a button. And there you have it everyone. Now that we are completed, we are going to send this over to our onboarding specialists for them to start programming your phones so they will be shipped out as soon as possible. Thanks so much for following along.